Hello everybody and good morning. I can see that people are beginning to join us, which is great, and I'm sure they will continue to do so. Uh, welcome this morning to um, another in our series of webinars, Digital Wellbeing and Cultures Around New Digital Trends, that there's a mouthful, the hybrid working model, home and office. Um, well, welcome one and all. Um, I was looking at a, a survey recently and it, it sort of it basically the findings were that 46% of companies are actively looking to move, searching out better locations um, to upgrade facilities and find more space. A third said they'll be downsizing as staff will be working more frequently from home. Um, so basically the future is flexible. Uh, after working from home for over a year now, um, firms are looking at the roles that offices will, will play when, when lockdown eases. And we did rather hope that we would have a bit more of an answer about the easing of lockdown, but um, that seems to be being pushed back sort of constantly. Um, but we are hoping that, you know, maybe July, August, September, you know, who, who knows how long's a piece of string. Um, NatWest are looking to hybrid, hybrid working post pandemic with just 13% in the office first model. Um, Interestingly, London could be a net benefit benefactor from this shift, with more than a third of companies considering moving into the capital, as it's still seen as a highly prized location. Um, that's an interesting one. Seeing pictures of the city on the news, I mean, it looks pretty um, like a, a desert town to me at the moment. Um, it then goes on. I mean, I, I worry about people not going into an office. It, it's the communal space where colleagues and clients can meet face to face. It's, it's the talks over the sort of the, the water cooler um, at the American term. Um, so so that, that's my worry. If, if for people working from home, um, like myself, who've got the space, that's all well and good. But it, it's the younger people in rented accommodation. Um, but many employees will want to continue working from home as we ease out of lockdown, um, either on a full time or part time basis. Um, and many things employers need to bear in mind when making the move to working from home. Um, we will be covering some of those in this webinar, webinar today. Um, and I'd love to introduce our first speaker. Um, in fact, could every, all speakers turn their cameras on so we can see everybody? I can see Ed, but if, yeah, there's Jane, that's lovely. Um, Alan's camera's not working, unfortunately, but I think we, we know what he looks like. Um, but I'm sure you can say hello, can't you, Alan? Um, so yeah, first up to speak is, is Ed Hussey, Director of People Solutions at Menzies. Ed, over to you. Thanks, Sally, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so Sally mentioned uh, we're uh, People Solutions Advisors, so we advise employers on the full range of HR and employment-related issues. And this phase, as we emerge from the pandemic, um, still has its challenges, um, given all of the changes that have taken place, both to businesses and the feelings and motivations of people who work in them. So this phase of coming out of lockdown and the uh, the new normal, as they say, and managing ourselves into this into this kind of new world is something that we're obviously talking a lot to our clients about at the moment. And a, a, about half of the UK workforce are in jobs that can be done, at least in part, from home. And so the question of hybrid working is is a big one currently. As Sally mentioned, surveys of major employers have highlighted the majority of them will not return their staff to the office full time. Moving instead to this hybrid working pattern, uh, i.e. mixing office with home working two or three days a week. There's good evidence actually to suggest that this can work well for businesses and their employees in general. Uh, but making this shift does obviously come with management challenges. And I'm just going to take you through a few of our thoughts about how you make a determination of what kind of pattern that you that you need um, and some of the implications, some of the management implications of doing so before we then hear from Sally and Jane about the, 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 the kind of real life experiences that they're that they're currently going through. So where do you start with this? Well, you've probably got a mixture of some employees who are clamoring to get back um, and some who are very happy to stay at home. Um, and in considering what's best for your business, some of the good first steps are firstly to look at what's worked well with employees at home um, and what definitely needs to happen back in the office. 
Um, now there's evidence around this, which suggests that routine tasks can be done more efficiently at home. So you can actually boost short-term productivity by having people do their routine tasks um, in their own homes. Whereas innovation and creativity, in other words, the drivers of long-term productivity happen best in a collaborative environment. And I think that's being widely recognized, which is where the hybrid model is coming from and where people are then looking to maybe change the shape of their working environments because of the nature of the work that's going to happen back in the office. It's also important though to gather the thoughts of individual members of staff, um, individual circumstances from somebody's personality um, to their living conditions, are big determinants of how successful home working can be for them. And isolation leading to poor mental health is a, is a real risk for, you know, hardcore home workers and is something that uh, employers, I think, have a, have a duty to look out for, be aware of and, and provide some support with. So make an, next, uh, make an honest assessment of whether your culture is ready for significant levels of ongoing homeworking. Now, this will depend largely on whether you measure employee success based on what they produce, i.e. their outputs, rather than the hours and effort that they put in or their inputs. Um, the former method is the best way to motivate your people because um, it's not about micromanaging, but trusting people to do what they need to do and measuring them by their results. And this is obviously a much better suited um, approach for homeworking, where obviously people aren't all sat in a space where they can be uh, monitored uh, directly. So putting all of that together, you then need to consider whether you have a common policy or whether you essentially leave it to individual choice. In, uh, in most cases, this is where we're ending up with hybrid policies, with companies stating, for example, like my own, Menzies, that there should be a minimum of two or three days spent in the office with the rest at home and some other parameters put around that for example you know we don't want an em we don't want empty offices on fridays because people might tend to gravitate towards the middle of the week if they're coming into the office so there are some kind of rules and yeah, some parameters put around it but there is also flexibility and i think that's important because it allows the possibility for those that are struggling at home to spend more time in the office if they want to um, and for people who want to spend more time at home to still be able to request that if they um, if they want to so it's a it's a combination of you know what we think the business needs with some individual flexibility to recognize people's individual circumstances. And so then uh, finally consider how your workplace layout needs to change. Um, if it's gonna become a place that's more for hot desking and collaboration um, rather than allocated desks, then you know that's something that a lot of employers are thinking about at the moment and of course comes with the added potential of being able to save on the cost of office space and we've certainly got a couple of clients who who no longer have offices at all they've they've taken advantage of break clauses in their rental agreements and are completely working from home and may think of in the future about hiring a collaborative space um, in a serviced office for specific purposes, but not for day-to-day -day working. So if we look at some of the implications of your decision, um, so if you decide that everyone must return to the office full-time, then communicate this clearly and explain why, because there will be plenty of people hoping to continue with that mix of office and home working who will actually feel quite disappointed about having to go back to the old, the old ways. Um, and also consider the fact that this period has turbocharged the attractiveness of flexible working. And so you may lose out in recruitment, for example, if you're too rigid. And we're actually seeing some evidence of that, you know, candidates really expecting that there will be an element of uh, home working involved in their, in their new roles. Similarly, if home working becomes a permanent feature, there's a lot to consider and put in place to make it successful. Um, and some employees for whom this will present particular challenges. Now, obviously, if you're going hybrid, then there's going to be a mixture of those 
issues to consider. So let's just go through a, a few of them. So for employees returning to the office, um, either all or part of the time, um, start to talk to them about plans for returning, uh, and in particular, your COVID safe guidelines that you have in place. Plan for how you're going to accommodate people whilst distancing measures are still in place. And obviously we don't know how much longer they're gonna be in for, hopefully not much longer, but we don't know at the moment. Um, and maybe give people an opportunity to phase back in. Um, you may want to give priority to those who really want to come back. Um, if the home environment's proved difficult, or if they need to be amongst colleagues. So these are the younger workers Sally was referring to in terms of trainees, people who've started. I mean, we've got people who started working for the business six months ago and have never stepped foot inside an office or seen a colleague, you know, in the flesh. So there are going to be categories of workers for whom it's going to be more useful to be uh, back in the office sooner. But by the same token, some people may be nervous about their return, especially if they were shielding in a vulnerable category. So ask people to come forward with questions and discuss how you can address their concerns, either through your COVID safety measures or uh, the flexibility you can bring to other aspects of their kind of working arrangements. Then for those who are continuing to work at home, either all or part of the time, you're gonna to need to communicate and consult with those affected and essentially agree these changes because it may well represent a contractual change. You know, the contract of employment might say your place of work is uh, our office five days a week. Uh, you're actually changing their contractual terms to move to this arrangement. Now, for most people, this is likely to be agreeable, but it is something that you just need to be aware of and uh, and kind of formalize in some way um, and obviously in that process be very open to questions and concerns that they have about these arrangements and act reasonably in terms of your responses for people home working you do still have all of your responsibilities for their health and safety um, and so you should carry out a risk assessment in relation to their in relation to home working in general um, and take steps to provide the information, facilities, guidance, etc., that your employees need to stay safe. And this should also include ensuring that they are able to carry out their own kind of work workstation assessment. You know, those kind of ergonomic assessments that they need to be to be safe at home. And there are ways, obviously, you can do that remotely, either through a, just a paper and pencil questionnaire, or some. There are some more technologically exciting ways of doing that as well. So then prepare or adapt your policies um, about working from home, which may well include um, the requirement to risk assess that the home space, um, what co company equipment you're going to provide, what data security measures that you've got in place that you need to, people to adhere to, um, and things like, you know, ensuring employees have checked their home insurance, that their home insurance is still applicable if they're, if they're working from home. So then obviously you need to consider how to manage remote workers. You know, people have, it's actually quite different with you know, the expectation that you're gonna see people on your, you know, working in your office space five days a week is quite different when they're distributed. So, you know, how do you manage performance at a distance? You know, how do you stay in touch, create a team atmosphere? Um, these are all very real management challenges. And I think um, you need to, to, I mean, we haven't got really time to discuss much of that, but I think more of an effort needs to be made to create those opportunities because they're not, they're not just going to naturally exist anymore. So putting something in the diary for a Zoom catch up just for the sake of, you know, having a social chat with the team or, uh, you know, making those opportunities for one to one catch ups, um, team catch ups, having a bit of fun. Uh, you know, and obviously arranging, um, if you are doing hybrid working, making sure some of that time in the office is spent on management, you know, management communication, um, you know, in individual catch ups and those kind of things. It's really about being more consciously doing those things, I think, in general. Um, so training, um, particularly for new employees, you know, how do you deliver that um, if people are remote? people who've started their employment, how are you going to manage their induction, um, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, and the boundary between home and work has been a struggle for some and has created additional stress. And what I mean by that is, you know, some people are managing their work throughout the day. So they might be doing starting at 7 a.m. and finishing at 10 p.m. and having breaks in between. Some of them might be trying to stick rigidly to their hours and then try to draw those distinctions between what's home and what's work. And personally, that's something I've found quite challenging uh, working at home. Um, and so again what's your approach to that are you do you know does your business require people to still work nine to five um or are you going to allow that kind of more flexible approach there are again considerations both for what the business needs and for people's you know health and well-being around that and i think providing people with access to support and guidance about the potential implications of that on mental health is going to be something that's important um, so there's no doubt that lockdown has changed our attitude to working from home and it's amazing what businesses have achieved in such a short time so it's do you do consider the opportunities for you to benefit from having employees with a better work-life balance the opportunities it gives you to recruit from a wider job market um, and with location being less of an obstacle for people um, you know productive working hours um, to suit the employee um, can be uh, can have benefits for both them and the business um, and so obviously the hybrid model is trying to achieve um, the best of both worlds in terms of uh, that short-term and long-term productivity gains that you can that you can achieve so that's the um, that's my overview and it's going to be really interesting to hear about the real life um, challenges and thinking that's going on with Jane and Sally so Sally back to you Thank you very much indeed, Ed. Thank you. Um, just to remind people, we did do a webinar, I think it was the 27th of May, and that was concentrating an awful lot on health and safety. We had our director, Mel Bruno, and I think Ed was with us also that day. And you can see all our videos um, on our YouTube channel. And I'm sure Lisa will put the uh, details in the chat box. Um, next up is Jane Jones from Dell Technologies. i um, known Jane uh, for quite a few years now, and Jane serves on our advisory board, as does Ed. So Jane, over to you. How has Dell coped with all this? Hi, Sally. Good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm Jane Jones from Dell Technologies. I've been asked to talk about the hybrid working model and what we're doing at Dell. <clears throat> so I just wanted to go back in time to last year and explain how we worked then, how we're working now, and how we see it changing in the future. So I think it was around February last year that corporate sent out an email to advise us that if possible, everybody should try to work from home. This has encouraged more and more as time went on and further restrictions came into force. And then the message changed that the offices would only be open for emergencies, i.e. to pick up equipment or for, to come into CIT. To be honest, everyone at Dell, as you can imagine, is given a laptop as standard. So apart from a few of the teams that worked on customer sites or in our IT department, everyone else could work from home with varying degrees of comfort, of course. So whilst all this was going on, behind the scenes, IT had to do a very quick job of upscaling our remote infrastructure to ensure that it, it could cope with all the hundreds now people that are joining our virtual network. Um, <clears throat> So that was Dan, um, and just wanted to, to mention that in 2009, Dell introduced a connected workplace program, which enabled flexible working. So anybody that wanted to work from home or we work remotely, they could sign up for this. Um, Dell's goal was to have 50% of people working flexibly by 2020. They've actually got a figure of 53% globally now. So moving on from that, um, as time goes on and months go by, we're hearing mixed reports on the working from home model. With people that are loving it, have an office or spare room, or like myself, very fortunate that my husband had a man cave that I now have, have as my she shed. You can't actually see it at the moment, but uh, um, however, that's not the case for everybody, as we know. We have um, quite a lot, a young sales team, quite a lot of people that are in difficult situations working from their bedrooms or their kitchen tables and in uncomfortable setups. Um, also struggling with a lack of social interaction that I'm sure we can all relate to. So, you know, communication is the key. And I think keeping everyone informed is so very important, especially those that feel isolated 
and we used to work in teams. Um, so we updated our website, we dedicated a whole page to um, Dell COVID guidelines and we put as much information we could possibly put on there as far as answering all the questions that were, you know, there was hundreds of questions coming in. What about this? Or, you know, can I come to the office and collect my, my chair? Can I take the desk, the, the monitor off my desk? I've got noisy children. Can I come in and work in the office? You know, there were so many questions. That, uh, so we had a central place for everybody to go to. We sent regular emails checking on everybody. We introduced um, quite a lot of initi initiatives encouraging mental well-being. We introduced walk and talk. Um, you know, so rather than sit on a Zoom call, take your phone, take your dog, go out, have a walk, rather than sitting, uh, you know, looking at your screen all day. We had global step challenges, some fun Zoom calls. I'm sure we've all done a, a cooking Zoom call at some point or other, or a cocktail making one. Um, so we sent out regular surveys, um, trying to keep people positive, but we asked in the surveys, what, what would you like to do when the pandemic is over? Where would you like to be working? So the interesting um, results came through and 7%, just 7% wanted to come back to the office full time. 57% would like to continue working from home regularly and 36% would prefer a hybrid working model. So some of the time at home and some time in the office. So to support our team's desire to be more flexible, we expanded our connected workplace program to now also include a hybrid working model rather than just a remote working model, which teams sign up for. And uh, like Ed mentioned earlier, you know, that actually changes their contract where they're actually based will be their home. And then they have the option to come into the office when they want to, when they need to, enabling a flexible working style um, where they can you know, be at home on a regular basis and come to the office to collaborate as needed. Okay, so that's what we were doing and are doing. And so now what we're we looking to do in the future, um, we will be doing another survey shortly, but we feel that this, the, the feeling will be the same really. Um, and the numbers will be very similar to I just, those I just mentioned. So with this in mind, um, <clears throat> we have many offices around the UK and some, some very small, Therefore, we could save on operating costs by closing the offices when the leases expire and opting for a WeWork or a Regis facility. For example, somewhere um, that you can go as a normal office, you have all the facilities that you would if you went into a Dell office, but you have access to everything and you just sign in, you book the room and you go ahead and have your meeting or you sit in there for the day, whatever suits you, but you've got somewhere to go to um, rather than working from your home. Uh, for our large offices at the moment, um, if anybody's been to the Dell office, you'll know it's just banks and banks of desks, to be honest. We have a few meeting rooms around the edge of the office and then it's just desks, lots of desks. Um, mostly we have permanent desks and hot desks. So our long-term plan would be for no to very few permanent desks. I mean, some people like IT would need to have a permanent desk. Um, we need to know how to find IT, that's so important. Um, and hot desks would become hotel desks. So in other words, they will be bookable desks. So you will book them prior to coming into the office. Um, the meeting rooms would, be made, would remain available. Uh, we would open up the office for a more collaboration space. So there'd be areas for social interaction, more community spaces for workshops or open discussions. Uh, we're not rushing the team members back to the office. Uh, we're following the government guidelines and we're taking a conservative approach to return to site. So that's how we see the look of the office in the future. However, it's a moving target and only time will tell as to whether we even need a large office space. At Dell, we say work is something you do. It's an outcome. It's not a place or a time. You can be anywhere. And obviously, with the help of a Dell laptop makes it easier. <laughs> so lastly, um, we're in the process of developing uh, an app. At the moment, when you go into a Dell facility, you have to complete a form to confirm that you have no COVID symptoms, you haven't been in contact with anybody um, that has any symptoms. So rather than completing that form, you can download the app, you can do this prior to going into the office, you can uh, access the health screening tool to confirm you're healthy and symptom free. You can pre-book your desk or your meeting space or your meeting room. You can let your colleagues know. 
and uh, for the offices that actually have a restaurant, you'll be able to pre-book your lunch as well. This is all still work in progress. So that's where we are today. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> and as if by magic, Alan's appeared. Well done. Um, <laughs> I, it, it's fascinating to to see how a large organization works and how a small organization works and i would like to share with you how hounslow chamber sort of coped with all this there's only three of us in our office which is uh we're very um happy and and, and pleased to be uh west thames college give us grace and favor offices in their wonderful um georgian building spring grove house in Isleworth. it's a it's a, a quite a small um, office, three desks in it for the three of us. And so we were working away quite happily and then COVID came along. We held a big event in February, which we just, you know, a live event in uh, which we just got under the wire. Then we held an event on the 20th of March. COVID was mentioned, but, but not very seriously. Um, and then I think probably about two weeks later, we just, you know, we, we were told the college is closing. Well, no, no, we were told we were advised to work from home. So off we all set. And I thought, well, the college is going to remain open. I can still slope into the office. No problem. I can still get back to my desk and my papers because I'm a bit of a paper person. Um, and then, as, as Ed was saying, we we're incredibly flexible. I got used to working from home. Um, and now I can't really imagine anything else. So again, you can't, it, it's working the next steps out. I mean, first of all, I was working from my kitchen table, which wasn't ideal, uh, with a Dell laptop. Um, I hadn't got it propped up and I was and so therefore it split the one day there was an almighty crash and this pine table had split the heat from the laptop so I have now got it um, uh, balanced on Michelin green guides I'm not going on holiday so the green guides are now um, up, up in my, my laptop the kitchen worked quite well initially because I'm a bear of little brain and I quite I could only do things in month stages I kept thinking well, I've got Easter to get through. Then I've got the May bank holidays. So I was doing it in small chunks. Alan and I were communicating every morning and in the evening. Lisa was rather left out on a limb, for which I apologise, Lisa. Um, and, and that for the first three months, we went to pieces a bit. We were just sort of trying to keep things going. Um, and then I think back in July, oh, so at that stage I was on a kitchen table with a cushion. It then went up to a backrest. Um, I then our health and safety director clocked that I was working from home and she sent me a huge great document which Ed you probably know these huge great documents that it just terrified me because I thought that this is my home I don't want a great big work chair at the end of my kitchen this is where I actually live um, so it was a bit I got a bit cross at that stage <laughs> thinking what is going on here and then in July of 2020, I think I realised the writing was on the wall. We weren't going to get back to the office for some time soon. Um, I decided the kitchen table was not viable any longer. Um, the printer was up in my son's bedroom and he was a rubbish print, roo print room. I would send information up to him to print and he wouldn't do it. And then I'd forget what I was, what was and I'd ask him to print for me. So the whole thing was a bit disastrous. I got hold of the printer. I then realised we have a very small landing, so and we had a trestle table in the garage, so that was lugged up to the landing. I covered it with the tablecloth. Um, the the company bought me an extra screen. I've got proper keyboard. The printer is right next door to me. Um, I could look out the window and watch the world go by. So I'm really quite happy on my landing. Um, and the thought of going back to the office is, as I say, it's a bit daunting because the office ties you. Working from home. Um, you can, you can, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you can just put the washing out, you can sort of feed the cat, you, you can take your breaks and do something quite normal with it as well. Um, I'm a lady of a certain age, so I'm quite happy with my own company. Um, I do worry about the youngsters and, and also the peer to peer learning, because you, you would learn an awful lot in the office hearing just other people talking what was going on. I mean, sometimes that stops you getting work done because you then go off at a tangent. I do find working at home, you're far more focused. You, you, you set yourself a task and you can get it done. Um, so so there, there are an awful lot of, um, yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of pros and cons. We haven't been very good as an organisation to do Zoom sort of social meetings. I think we're all a bit Zoomed out. I mean, Alan and I talk a huge amount and Lisa and I, since after three months, we then got into quite a good you know, groove and rhythm 
that, that we now do talk an awful lot. We use um, Zoom meetings and use shared screen. Um, once we were applying for a tender for Hounslow Council, a big, big tender, and I did actually slope around to Alan's house and I was let in under cover of darkness. So that's <laughs> a way we could actually sit together to actually work on this document because that was, it was doing our heads in, having to do it on a shared screen. And and, and then I had to work on his Mac. And, and I don't know if you use a Mac, but the type, the type, um, the, the, the keyboard of a Mac is a nightmare. So um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a happy bunny, but we did win the tender. So that was good. Um, so yeah, so, so that's sort of our story. I mean, the office is still sitting there. It looks as though a bomb has hit it. it we do need to sort it out. Um, and so that's gonna be the first job when we do go back. But it, it's, I think we're all a little bit, you know, we're a bit nervy. I mean, Alan and Lisa, um, obviously a, a father and daughter, and Alan has his own office at home anyway, and you can see his amazing chair. So he was well and truly set up. Um, and Lisa is, is much the same. Her chair is almost better than Alan's. And I think her, her computer is water cooled. Um, so so no no cracked pine tables for Lisa. Um, so so that that's where we are. I mean it, it's sublime to the ridiculous really. We're a very small organization, but we coped because we had to. Um, and we're doing really well and we embraced, you know, especially me, because I, I'd heard about Teams meetings. I remember West London Business used to invite me to Teams meetings before all this happened. And I just thought, what's he on about? I mean, I, I don't, I, that scares me. I'll, I, I can't go to the meeting. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> they can do without me at that meeting. And now, um, I, you know, because you have to use it, you, 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 you know, you, you have to learn. Um, so, so yes, Zoom and Teams I'm fine with. Not very good for them for social things because I see them as work. Um, so so that's, that's where the chamber is. Alan, do you have anything to, to add? Yes, um, I just uh, I've turned the volume back up. Um, I, it, it's it's very interesting. You go to um, work in an office like at the Chamber of Commerce. You, you get a, a, a small. Uh, it's in a wonderful building, um, but you get a small desk and you get a chair that gives you backache, and you're working off a tiny screen on a on a on a rubbish laptop, and, and by comparison, you come home. Um, and, and you're working from a, a, a decent sized office um, with, with a nice chair. Guess what I got for Christmas? I got a chair to fit in my office. This is the 21st lockdown century now. Um, uh, as, as Sally described, Lisa has got a, a, a motorized desk to adjust the height of it. You'd never get anything like that in a Chamber of Commerce office. So actually working from home um, you, you find you, you tend to invest a bit more in yourself and um, in a way instead of investing in space in an office uh, you spend it on the things that really matter the way you communicate um the, the thing that I wanted to um, say though more it is it's very interesting listening to Sally's story of being dragged kicking and screaming away from an office being planted at home um, crack desks, achy backs, um, stools at uh, kitchen tables, um, to finally seeing her after a while in, in, a, in a wonderful little setup that she's got for herself in her office. Um, you go round to Sally's new office, her home, and you don't need to ring the doorbell. She spotted you walking up the garden path right outside. <laughs> I watched the world go by. It's fascinating. You can see everything. Yeah, it's great. If you want yeah. to know what time the, the local MP who is across the road goes to work, ask Sally, she'll tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, 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 it suits me absolutely beautifully. The, the other thing that's interesting is when we started doing um, webinars ourselves, we ended up going to a wonderful company in Chiswick called Chiswick Buzz to get some help on putting these webinars together on Zoom. And after six months, we decided, well, we, we've got to do a bigger event. So we got some help from 2K Tiger. And we realized then that we had to buy our own Zoom account. Um, you can't just carry on 40 minutes at a time for free. You have to jump into the water at some point. So we invested in that. And then we all realized, 
well, actually, hosting these things isn't so mm. difficult. We can do that ourselves. We've got somebody who works for us who's quite tech literate. And we made the most of her, didn't we, Sally? We did indeed. Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think our, our height of, of success, we had to do our business awards. Um, and we actually did those via Zoom um, in December. Um, I think I think you were both yeah well you were definitely with us Jane um, which was great because Dane was talking it was it was really good um, it, it was a really good evening and I think that sort of made us realise that we can do this um, so, so with, yeah. with two hundred people yeah at, in yeah. attendance but, uh, which I, I was really, quite a big turnout yeah um, but I still yes we we're trying to plan our regeneration recovery event. And I, yeah, it was going to be the 24th of June, but we've just had to push it back. Fingers crossed for the 23rd of July. Um, each time I hear the news, one day, you know, it sounds it sounds hopeful, then it sounds less hopeful. And um, today was a, it's, I think it's a bit more of a positive one. Um, I think Manchester is sort of kicking, you know, some people are sort of saying, look, hospitalizations are not on the increase by a huge amount. The vaccination program is working. Um, so, so hopefully, uh, 23rd of July will go ahead because that's the sort of an event I think that is more difficult to do via Zoom. Um, I think that's a really good note that you've just struck there, Sally. We, we should put out a really big thank you for Kelly O'Neill oh, and yeah. all of her staff at the council for the, the effort that they've made in plateauing out this huge surge that we were having locally in Hounslow um, because it, it's now plateaued out and it's holding steady with no real increases in new cases um, by comparison to other neighbouring boroughs to us. Um, the last thing I was going to say, though, is that when you go through these type of situations, a, a pandemic or a war or something dramatic changes, um, computers replace typewriters in offices. Um, you, you, you have to make a, that there's an opportunity to make a real step change in the way we all work and way we all do things. We've all appreciated the cleaner air that's out there. Do we all really want to go back to commuting all the way to work and increased pollution around the cities that we live and work and play in? Or do we want to try and run a more virtual world um, and go out when we need to actually have meetings rather than go to work because that's where we're based as a desk and a chair mm. and we've got a chance to break that mold at this point and I think we should try and make the most of this opportunity they don't come along very often yeah. and the, the way this has come along you know no I remember Boris telling us we'd have to stay at home for three weeks when this all started when did that three weeks go to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hence, I was doing it each. Yeah, I remember I was just living for each announcement, thinking, you know, I'll get back to the office quite soon. Um, and, and then it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't happen. Um, Can you imagine the reaction if he had said you'd have to stay at home now for one and a half years? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, he'd, he'd have, yes, and would not have been a pretty look. Um, a quick one for you, Ed. How did you, because I mean, you've said this, I, I do find it's difficult to switch off because the, the computer's there. Um, we've all been working, I think, longer hours because, you know, up and, you haven't been able to go out. So you just think, well, I might as well just, you know, deal with the rubbish emails. So you then, you know, so, you know, often, I mean, both Alan and I are the same. Weekends will log in just to, just, as I say, to get rid of the rubbish. But how do you actually switch off? Because being in the home, you just think, oh, well, I've got a spare half hour. You know, yeah, not mm. much else to do. I'll just go and look at, I'll go look at some emails. Um, bit sad, I, I, but that's the fact of the life. I mean, how, yeah. how, how do you well, deal with that? Well, I don't feel that well qualified to answer your question because I'm because you've just described me. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I think there are. This is where it comes down to the type of personality you are. Anyway, I think some people find it much easier to compartmentalize things mm -hmm. and to have the self discipline. Uh, and probably the organisational skills to be able to um, get their work done and, and create that separation uh, between their work and their uh, home life, whether they're distributing their work throughout the throughout the waking hours or whether they're just sticking to to um, you know work you know at nine to five. Um, obviously, I mean the advice is to um, you know shut down you know try to fix 
it, when when you finished work um shut everything down i mean that's one of the things i'm terrible at i leave everything on mm. so that whenever i'm passing <laughs> i can just come and sit down and have another quick look um and you know my team said to me the other the other day um god ed you were emailing us at midnight what what are you doing i said well i was just on my way to bed so i just kind of you know <laughs> um just thought knock a few emails not, out exactly yeah. yeah i was just too curious about what might have happened <laughs> since six o'clock you know um which is which is all you know i need to get a life um but uh it takes an enormous amount of self-discipline yeah. you know i mean i do uh, and some of us just some of us have it and some of us don't some of us just need to try hard and some of us don't i mean i'm the biggest I mean, I think, uh, you know, probably the biggest impetus I've got is the fact that, you know, I've got a wife who is also at home and um, provides me with feedback about my working hours <laughs> and the extent to which I'm getting out the house <laughs> and that there's a dog that needs walking, and, uh, you know, and, and these kind of things. Mm. So I think it's very circumstantial, you know, but um, I, I, but I think it's, I think it's, it's definitely one that as we enter this brave new world, people like us are going to need to get to grips with that because I actually, I do end the week thinking, Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Yes. You know, um, yep. we've got, it's not going to be good for my health and it's, mm -hmm. you know, mentally or physically um, we've got to learn mm -hmm. to self manage uh, a lot better and I'm definitely one of those people yeah no I think we need yeah we, we need to chat offline about this one because yes I I'm just the same and do what you think then this is not sustainable but then yeah. you, you keep on doing because the work's what I find is the work's not going to go away yeah um, and I'm the one that's going to get anxious over it so you just yeah. think well just you know I'll do it yeah. a, a couple of hours on a Saturday morning at, at my at my leisure so I don't yeah. have phones going and I just you know get get rid of the, 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 the big job I need to yeah. get rid of but it may be that, you know, it's a group like we've identified, you know, commonality there, you know, between us. It might be that, you know, you need to create little little groups of like minded people. You know, it's not something that everyone's going to need, but yeah. there are a few people who, you know, it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a, a challenge. And maybe little groups should get together and, yeah, but, you know, challenge each other on what yeah. have you done there? How often have you been out of the house this week? Well, next week, why don't we all try to, you know, get out of, you know, every day or oh, set, set each other some challenges, you know? Well, my, my challenge at the moment is, it's, I mean, it's a beauty, it's, the weather's glorious and we've just had our latest edition of the magazine delivered. So um, yesterday I tend to walk everywhere or go by bus. Um, I will be going to Chiswick to deliver some magazines um, and that's because then I can sit with that. That's work because I'm delivering the magazines, but it's also yeah. gets me out. It gets me out in, into you know the fresh air. Um, well, that's it. And, you know, I think, you know, seeing more and more. Yeah. Learning that, you know, I mean, smartphones are wonderful things. They're all there. You know, it's that, another blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. But I can talk to people while I'm walking the dog. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can now, you know, again, there are there'll be people saying, no, no, no you should be talking. Talk without talking to people. But, you should you be know, talking I, to the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Jane, how, how do you find it with your, I love, love your she shed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm fortunate that, you know, <clears throat> I feel like I'm going to work. I walk up the garden path in the mornings and unlock the shed and I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm here, but, um, and then I can close it at the end of the day. So unlike you, Ed, I'm not walking past my laptop all the time and sort of having a little look at emails and stuff. Yeah. So I think that's it's a, probably a good thing, really. Um, and I think I tend to actually take more breaks working at home than I did in the office because I'd be in the office and I wouldn't have a lunch break or anything and it would just work through until the job was done and, you know, come back. But um, I make a point, because I'm on my own, I make a point of taking the dog for a walk, you know, and... Um, or just, you know, going out for a walk with listening to an audio book. So I'm not thinking about work all the time. And Dow very much encouraged that, you know, and um, it's hard. It's really hard sometimes, especially when the weather's awful. I mean, at the moment, as you said, it's lovely. But uh, I think you, it, it's important, you know, to do that. I really do. And, and I and I feel, I, I mean, I have to say, I'm, I love working at home, mm. um, you know, and I'm very fortunate with the setup. But uh, it just gives you so much more time back. 
you know, to do things. All the time I was sitting in the car going into the office, you know, I got that time back and I feel more relaxed and um, yeah, no stress with the journey. And um, so I, you know, I, I'm quite happy and, and I'm enjoying, enjoying it really. And uh, like my walks, I go out sometimes really early in the morning before I start work and um, wake up nature. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and also it's probably one more for Jane than the, than the men clothes wise okay I've, i'm yeah slopping around in a t-shirt and shorts today you can't see the shorts and the slippers um when we do have to go back to meetings it's, it's going to be the, it's the same old clothes that i haven't worn for 18 months nothing's going to fit me to sally <laughs> it's just going to be a bit strange um because i don't really you know i'm quite happy just yeah um because somebody was asking for the regen event when we thought it was going to be in june they said what what sort of you know what sort of clothes I mean, you know, and I just said, oh, well, you know, I mean, it's just as so, so long as you rock up. I don't mind what you're wearing. <laughs> it's a well-known fact now, Sally, that if you leave your clothes hanging in the wardrobe for over a period of time, they shrink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found that, Alan, totally. <laughs> no, excellent. Um, I think people are going to be dressing a lot more casually, to be honest. Yes. You know, because yes. we've got comfortable, haven't we? Yes. And unless perhaps you're going for a meeting with a customer, mm. then I, I, I do think that it will be interesting to see. But um, that's how I feel, to be honest. You know, yes. Uh, um, I, I remember when I first started working for the Chamber all those years ago, um, back in 2001, I did actually work eight years from home because um, the children were small. So I did it around the, the, the children. Um, and, and that, yes, it worked ever so well because I am quite self-motivated, so that was all fine. And I was the one, if anyone did suggest a meeting at, at a coffee shop, I would jump at it. You know, a meeting would get me sort of out and, and, and sort of up and dressed and going. Um, so, so interesting, interesting times. I think the um, office attire has changed anyway, really. I mean, you think people always used to wear suits to work. Yeah. You know, it's got a lot, you know, that's, people don't really, unless you work for a bank, I don't yeah. think you really do anymore, do you, or meeting yes. them? Yes. No, I went for a meeting yesterday with Heathrow Airport in Compass House. Um, and the three people that went there all had suits on. The really? person that we met from Heathrow Airport Limited in Compass House mm. had a t shirt and jeans on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said to him, I wish we had known that before we <laughs> yeah. got dressed up and came down. But what was very funny is that. Uh, we got taken up to a meeting room. Compass House is a, a huge, great building, if you've ever been there. Um, there's now hardly anybody working there. It's really um, a vaccination and testing centre, more than anything else. Um, when we got to the side of the building that people work in, um, we got taken to an office meeting room. Um, we were told to sit one on each corner of the big four desks that were put together, so we were socially distanced, um, and we then asked if you'd like a glass of water. So we said politely, no thank you, we're fine. We said, well, if you don't have a glass of water, then you have to keep your mask on. If you're sitting <laughs> at a desk with a glass, you can take your mask off, because you're allowed to under the rules. <laughs> and, I, and then I looked out at the office and everybody that they had in their office all had an open bottle of something or other by the side of them. Um, to, aye, aye, aye. Um, and, and to come back to your comment about sending emails at midnight, um, Sally, of course, doesn't do anything like that. She's very good at not uh, sending late so emails. You're, you're the night owl. I tend to do early morning or Saturday and Sundays. You're the night owl. You, 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 you talk to some people. Um, uh, Prince Charles is one of the people who who sleeps with a notepad and pencil by the side of his bed. Yep. And if he wakes up with a thought in the night, he can quickly scribble it down. Yes, I've got one the of first those. thing in the morning before. Well, of course, in our world now, you, you send your email off as soon as it pings into your yeah. head, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the the thing that I, when I used to live overseas and you'd get frustrated with things that were going on. Um, especially when you're living overseas on your own. Uh, it was very easy to send off messages or emails in frustration. Uh, I've found these days, draft it up, but don't send it. Wait till the next morning. Have a read of it again in the cold light of day. Yeah. Um, and, oh, my God, you suddenly realise, I wasn't really thinking about sending that, was I? Yeah. 
yeah. and, and that, that's a that's a big sort of thought of the moment um if you ever sort of get in those frustrating situations yeah and don't press the send button yeah disconnect oh. them. <laughs> the other thing about sending late emails is i read them again the next day and my spelling and punctuation was awful <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm of an age where I still care about that stuff. Yes, so am I. Yes. <laughs> so I, I've come up with a clever solution for that. I've got on the bottom of all of my emails that I send from my phone, sent from my iPhone, apologies for the spelling errors. Yeah, yeah. I, quite like, <laughs> I quite like that one. That's quite clever. I'm um, Going back to your meeting at Compass House, though, Alan, I mean, Compass House is a bit of a schlep to get, though, to get to. You have to go by car. So, I mean, and I often yeah, miss it and I end up going under that ridiculous, I end up actually in the airport because I missed the turning and on at least three occasions I've had to go under the underpass um, and get myself in a right mess around Heathrow Airport. So, I mean, would that, I mean, that meeting would have been so much easier just, just via Zoom. Well, I've got news for you, Sally. Yeah. If you do that today, you're going into an ultra low emission zone area. And with your car, oh, with my mind you'll get a whopping great big fine as well. <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to use Zoom in future. Because, um, I, I mean, I found that meetings at, at Hounslow House, the, the new the new building at, at, yeah, in, at the Hounslow um, Civic Centre, um, their meeting rooms are internal with no natural light. Um, and again, you know, you slept there for a meeting um, and, and you're not offered a tea and coffee because that's a different, they have to fill in different chits to get teas and coffees. Um, yeah, so for me, a, a Zoom meeting is so much easier um, just so you can be there um, and, and listen and maybe do a little bit of work in the background while, the, while they're talking about stuff which doesn't really a, a, affect. Yeah, so I think, I think it is the way forward. But hey, um, I'm looking at the time. We've got, we're, we're almost at top of the hour. Has anybody more thoughts to add? Um, I've got one last little tip that I've picked up as a good idea as well. And it's sort of along the lines of what Ed was talking about. Um, I've invested in some of these, which again was a, was a nice Christmas present. Um, and if you save up your phone calls during the day, you can go out for a decent walk during the day and make all of your phone calls while you're walking. You get some exercise. You don't have to type because you're not on a phone call. You're not typing away at the same time. At least I'm not. Um, and, and you you get, I managed to run up 10,000 steps a day with ease now, um, largely by making different phone calls to people that I've saved up during the day. And you can get them all properly talked through and sort, sorted um, while getting some exercise. Mm. My trouble is I have to remember what I've said to do for people. And so therefore, if I'm <laughs> yeah. walking and talking and I can't write, yeah, <laughs> Gecko's well, a bit wrong. I've, me. I've got a solution for that as well, Sally. Oh, to take notes. Uh, no, no. I agree that's what you should do um, <laughs> uh, on the phone and say, look, please, I'm out walking at the moment. Can you send me an email asking me about that? And I'll send Remind you a reply me. back afterwards. Remind me to do it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Record, record the call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's the way to do it. But the, um, the, other, the other clever thing as well with um, smartphones is you, you can um, uh, say things like, hey, Siri. Okay, it hasn't come up. And then you can dictate an email to yourself really quickly over the phone. The spelling won't be perfect, the grammar won't be right, but the substance of what you need to remember from the phone call is okay. instantly there and it's sent straight to you at your home when you get back. Okay, sounds a good one to me. Good idea. You're not going to do it though, are you, Sally? No, no, no. you know what, I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of paper. I'm kind of paper. Yeah. And when I'm walking, I just quite like to be walking because I just quite like to switch off. Yeah. yeah anyway each to their own ed and i will be the ones that are always checking the emails <laughs> on our way to bed <laughs> um thank you very much for your time this morning um a one very quick thing the council always want me to publicize this there are still business recovery grants out there please visit hounslow.gov.uk forward slash covid hyphen business hyphen grants um, we will be publicising that in all the emails. I do send out an awful lot of emails, but please do read them. At the moment, we're very much backing the council for this surge testing and vaccination programme. I think 
um, the last one, I think, I think 35,000 were vaccinated yesterday. I think that's what the, the headline was. So just read the emails and when, you know, keep safe and, and you know, between us, we, we will, we will get back to be together, hopefully on the 23rd of July, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. And um, go carefully. Okay. Have a great day. Lovely Thanks to see everyone. you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah,